Welcome to Cooking with Dorothy, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight in a brand new location. Well, not a brand new location to us, but this is our home in Olds. It's our first edition in this kitchen. Uh, we were in our our home in uh, Verdano Beach, and now we are back home in Olds, Alberta. So, different uh, location, but same show. <laughs> I'm just going to give everybody a few seconds to hop on here. Um, again, thank you for joining us. I hope you've had a chance to subscribe to Cooking with Dorothy. Uh, this will give you a chance to uh, enter or be eligible for prizes. And you'll also receive the recipe for the show, so you can cook along with me. If you're cooking along with me tonight, you can go ahead and preheat your oven to 275 tonight, a little bit lower. And we're just going to hang out for a few seconds, let other people hop on in here. And then when Drew gives us the go-ahead, <laughs> we'll get cooking. We're making granola tonight. So homemade granola is what we are making tonight. This was a full batch two days ago. <laughs> what happened, Drew? It tastes delicious. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Drew had some today, and he says, mmm, it tastes like candy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Share, are you going to share that recipe at some other time, the, the, what we've been having? Oh, the yogurt perfect. Because it's like dessert. I can definitely share that one here tonight as well. Just give you guys a little insight on how we use our granola as well as how to prepare it. So let me tell you who we got in yeah, here. Yeah, tell me. We got Louise. Hey, Louise. She said hello. Hilda. My hi, Hilda. mama. She's in here. We got Chantel. Said hi, Drew and Dorothy. Hey, Chantel. How was the workout today? <laughs> Chantel said nice... She said, nice red apron. Thumbs oh, up. yes. It's my, uh, I'd rather be cooking in Berry? Paris. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you got pants on under that thing. That is a good thing. <laughs> Shut up. You guys would be getting more than a cooking show if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we have Suzanne said hi. Hey, Suzanne. And Tina. Hey, Tina. Hi, Tina. She said hi to me, too. Thank you, Tina. Thanks yeah. for the acknowledgement. Yes. Well, <laughs> it is cooking with Dorothy, but uh, it would be pretty hard to do without Drew. Oh, and thank so, you. Thanks for being here, Drew, and manning the cameras and the computers. And We had... Oh, I put the... So those of you that haven't subscribed to Cooking with Dorothy yet, I put the subscription link in the comments below. All right. So be sure to subscribe to be entered into draws for prizes and also to receive the recipes before we make them. That's so, right. And then get the videos after. And that's right. Drew always sends out a replay of the video after. So if you're subscribed, you can't tune in live. He'll um, send that off to you in an email after the show. And we have Lori Chappelle. She said, hello from Ontario, Canada. Wow. Hello. Thanks for joining us, yes, Lori. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. I think we are ready to rock and roll. All right, we've got to go ahead from the producer. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's get started. So, tonight we are making our homemade granola. So, may, I just want to, before we get started, answer the question, why would we make homemade granola? And the biggest answer, or the biggest concern, I guess, with our cereal aisle <laughs> is the big S word sugar. <laughs> I was actually surprised not too long ago. Um, I looked at the back of a Cheerios box and I don't know why this shocked me, but sugar is in Cheerios <laughs> and it's pretty much in every box, box of cereal out there pretty much. And so that's why it's one reason why it's really good to make your own granola at home is because then you can control what ingredients you can put in there. And it's not just sugar that they put in cereals. They put all kinds of preservatives and other ingredients to enhance the flavor. And also the preservatives so that they can sit on the shelf for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> without going bad. So it's a great start to healthy baking by making your own granola. Because like I said, you can control the ingredients put in there. Tonight in our granola, it's a super simple recipe. You're going to need peanut butter, maple syrup, applesauce, oats, and what is, oh, complete truth protein. How could I forget about complete, complete truth protein? So 
Complete Truth Protein is going to add some extra nutrients to your granola. It's got healthy fats in there with hemp seeds. It has slow digesting carbs with the, or complex carbs with the quinoa. It's going to help you stay fuller longer. It's going to increase your energy level as well. And we all know when we are experiencing lots of energy, we're in a happier mood as well. So we put Complete Truth in, Protein in there to give us a little extra boost nutrient-wise. We have Suzanne said, you just froze up on me. Oh, darn. We're still good, though. And then Lori said, the weather. Yeah, sorry about that, Suzanne. We, we have a pretty clear connection right now, and we have a, a strong connection. So, unfortunately, when we're live, it could be different circumstances. Right. Sorry, Suzanne. Hope you're back on here. Yeah, we keep this. We're, 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 we're doing well. We're yeah. getting ready to roll. All right, let's whip this up. So... 275 for your oven because you want to cook granola low and slow. So that's the trick to cooking granola, and we'll get back more into that once we mix it up here. I've gone ahead and I've already mixed my oats. So we have six cups of oats in oats. Did I say that? <laughs> Look at Drew. It's oats. It's oats. <laughs> I thought I said it funny. Drew usually picks up on those things when I say it funny. So I've already mixed up six cups of oats, a cup of complete truth protein in there. And then one thing I didn't mention in the ingredients is if you want your granola to be nice and crunchy, you need to add uh, raw sugar. So stay away from refined sugar, of course. And, you know, those, those low quality ones, um, cane sugars and stuff like that. But one that we are really enjoying is... This one, pure maple sugar. That's one. Oh, Drew's giving me the signal. Step back. There. <laughs> that was the signal. Too close, there, right? Dorothy likes to get right in there. Right up close. <laughs> but a nice raw sugar, or I guess I don't. I feel wrong when I say healthy sugar because I don't feel like those two belong together. But maybe we should say healthy sweetener. Is this maple sugar here? And as you can see, ours is almost out. But that's one of our favorite raw sugars. There's also coconut sugar is a good example of a raw sugar as well. So if you want your granola to be nice and crunchy, you can add a couple of tablespoons of raw sugar to your granola as well. I'm not, I don't mean to interrupt here, but did you tell them about the, pri the two prizes we have going I did on? not. <laughs> Let me tell you about the prizes. See, that's why I need a producer. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. So... At the end of the show, we are going to announce the winner of our Stevia Prize from last week. This was given to us or donated yeah. <laughs> from Tom King, Guy Gone Keto, and he was on Drew's radio show, so Exploring Mind and Body. And he graciously gave us a big box of some of his products, and these just happen to be some of his things. This one here is a Agave Stevia blend. So there is two of those and a measuring cup. So this one we'll announce the winner for tonight at the end of the show. And then what we That was from last week. That was from last week, this one. All right, so somebody's name is already on this one, and we'll let you know who that is at the end of the show. But then the new prize for to listening into tonight's show and following along, if you stick around to the end, we'll put you in a draw for this book called The Pain Companion. And Drew, you had the author on your show. That's right. So we're fortunate to be sent books all the time by authors or publicists. And they that's what they do. They send us books and we review them and we want to share that share them with you guys. Yeah, so this one is Everyday Wisdom for Living and Moving Beyond Chronic Pain. So you could check out the um, on Exploring Mind and Body the interview with the author for that one as well. ExploringMindandBody.com. Dot com. It's also a podcast. It's also a podcast. <laughs> and you can download an app on any Apple device. That sounded funny. App, Apple. <laughs> you can download Exploring Mind and Body app on any Apple device. And you can listen to the shows whenever, wherever. I like to listen to them when I'm running or in the car. So it's always nice to be able to take them with you. So this one, announced at the end of the show. And this one, stick, to, stick around till the end to be entered to, to win this book. That's right. So we'll offer a keyword for you guys at the end of the show. So if you're watching at the end, then we will put your name into a draw and we'll announce that one in the next week. That's right. 
So back to mixing up our ingredients. Just talked about putting in the raw sugar to make it crunchy. Oats, make sure that um, if you are have trouble with gluten, that it's labeled gluten-free oats on your bag when you purchase them. Oats are, we talked about this, I think, with our granola bar recipe last week, that oats are gluten-free, but uh, lots of times they're made in facilities that also make things with gluten, so they do get contaminated. But if it says gluten-free on it, then you'll be sure that it was made in a facility that is doesn't doesn't um, I want to say consume but doesn't make anything with gluten in it either. So I think we're all set now. That's our dry ingredients there. Our wet ingredients. I'm just going to push our dry ingredients to the side. I've already started here with our wet ingredients. We have a half a cup of peanut butter and a half a cup of maple syrup in here. You can use maple syrup and honey interchangeably. Both great natural sweeteners to go in there. So the great thing about the wet ingredients is that it's half a cup, half a cup, half a cup. So it's a really easy recipe to remember as well because there's very few ingredients and then the measurements are quite similar as well. So I have one more ingredient to add here. I'm going to grab it back here. And that is the applesauce. Be sure to get a nice applesauce that has only apples <laughs> in the ingredient list. Sometimes they add the preserve. I'm getting the backup signal again. <laughs> Too close, Dorothy. Too close. Too close. Maybe you could tell them about your close stopper you know, story. You know what I need is I need a line on the floor <laughs> that's like you can't go over the line because I need boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy could use boundaries. Does anyone have, is anyone having trouble hearing our volume right now? Let us know if you are. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So Drew wanted me to tell the close talker story. <laughs> so should I share it, Drew? You should share it. Okay. Let's share the close talker story and then we'll get back to our recipe. So when Drew and I first started hanging out, <laughs> he thought that I talked a little bit close to him. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think you do. He's, you did. He, so I don't know. I guess I get excited. And when I'm excited, I move in close and he describes it that I was like, would be talking like this close to his face. She would and then he would close. back up and wait because I was so <laughs> close. And then I'd be like, what's this guy doing? So I would go forward <laughs> and he would back up and it was like he kept backing up, but I kept going forward. <laughs> and it turned into him like this one time physically like picking me up and like, there, you stay over there, like moving me. Stay on your side. So, stay on your side. So maybe I need like a bubble or or something, you know, to, so I don't get too close. <laughs> so, I think I'm much better at it now, though, Drew. You can tell when she gets excited, she gets right up close to the camera. That's what she does to people, too. <laughs> Sorry if I've done that to you. I apologize. So we had Kayla jump in here. She said, hey, you wonderful, too. Hey, Kayla. Thanks for joining us. We're whipping up some granola. And then Louise said volume's good. Chantel says volume's good. Okay. Okay. Thought we might have an issue there, but we are rocking. Thanks, guys. Let's continue with our wet ingredients. Keep those hearts coming. <laughs> Drew likes his hearts. So we have half a cup of peanut butter, half a cup of maple syrup. We just have to add our applesauce. We were talking there before Drew interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about making sure that your applesauce has one ingredient apples all right so so make sure you read your ingredients on the labels of that one they put all kinds of preservatives in apple sauces same thing for your goes for your peanut butter i'm getting crazy here i'm not gonna use the spoon oh <laughs> that's a big thing for dorothy she is a... so peanut butter reading your labels because in conventional peanut butter they put all kinds of things in there like hydrogenated oils and sugar and they actually put, actually add ingredients in there so the oil doesn't separate. The oil is supposed to separate. <laughs> I know it's a pain to stir the peanut butter. I know it's, it's a little bit extra work, but it is really worth it to your health to find peanut butter natural with one ingredient. I'm going to go ahead now and throw in, I'm going to use the spoon now, <laughs> and put in our applesauce. The applesauce in recipes, in healthy recipes, replaces butter or oil. 
and then your maple syrup and your honey replaces your refined sugar. Your healthy recipes. A little tidbit there for you. I think a little tip you mean. Tidbit. <laughs> I like tidbit. Okay. So if you're looking at a recipe that, a conventional, you know, uh, baking recipe that calls for uh, butter, say it called for a, a cup of butter, then you can just reduce it to half and use applesauce. So you could use half a cup of applesauce instead. Same with sugar. If it called for one cup of refined sugar, then you could use half a cup, maybe even a quarter of a cup of maple syrup or honey. Tipperoonies for you. Oh, wow. Tipperoonies. I like making my own words up. It's fun. We have a comment from Louise here. Awesome. Louise said, store the peanut butter jars upside down. They're much easier to mix. Yes, they are. So before you open them, before you take that seal off, flip it upside down. Sometimes if you even put it on its side, in the, in, in the like this is the peanut butter jar, you put it on your side and rotate it a little, like every couple days, that helps too. Um, I'm a much better stirrer of the peanut butter than Drew. Uh, yes. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Kayla said, Louise, you're a genius. Yes, that is a great tip. If you oh, guys have sure. questions, let us know in the comments about this recipe here in particular, mm -hmm. or other baking questions. Dorothy's happy to answer. Yeah. Now... That, before I go and mix these wet and dry ingredients together, I'm going to bring out some different ingredients for you, Drew. Alright. So, your nuts and seeds, you actually want to add after it's baked, after your granola is baked. Because if you throw your nuts and seeds in while it's baking, it's going to reduce the health benefits of the nuts and seeds. So that changes the properties of them when we bake them, and then they don't have as much nutrients anymore. So what I want to know from you guys is what is your favorite nuts, seeds, dried fruit to put in your granola? What do you prefer? What is, how do you like to spice up your granola? So for us, we like to put, so comment, let us know what your favorites are. For us, we like to add hemp seeds into our granola. Even though there's already complete food protein in there that has the nutrient quality of hemp seeds in it, it adds a little bit more crunch factor with the hemp seeds. And then we like pumpkin seeds as well. And this says sunflower seeds, but it is not sunflower seeds. It's actually some chopped up almonds. So when we're buying our nuts and seeds, make sure they're unsalted and raw if you can. And it's a good idea to store them in the fridge if they're raw. Because they will, what's that word, Drew? Um, not spoil. Well, they lose the properties from the healthy fats. No, but if you store them on the in the cupboard and they're raw, they'll spoil. Because they're thick or fat. Uh, I'm not sure what, anyone can help us out? <laughs> Who doesn't understand what I'm saying? No idea what Dorothy's rancid. talking about. That's the word. They'll go rancid in your cupboard if they're raw. So make sure you store your raw nuts and seeds in the fridge. Got a couple of comments. All right, what's your favorite? We didn't get that. We haven't gotten those favorites yet. Oh, we where, got some other comments. Where are your favorites, guys? <laughs> Louise said it's really messy to stir natural peanut butter, I think. That's why she puts it upside down. Yeah, it is so messy. That's why I like to do it because we get it messy every time. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I think that's a lot. Kayla said, I haven't really ventured from your recipe, Dorothy. I really like it. Awesome. And then, oh, Jennifer said, hey, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Didn't know, didn't know you were there, Jennifer. No, thanks She's, for tuning in. Jennifer said they go rancid. She got it. That's See, what she, she knew what I was talking about. Thanks, Jen. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find that word, so thanks for helping me out. <laughs> no idea what Dorothy talks about Some, most times. Sometimes I'm talking and Drew just has no idea <laughs> what I'm talking about. Chantel said walnuts, almonds, mm. pecans, and pumpkin seeds. Walnuts are so good. No, one of my favorites. I think walnuts might be my favorite, actually. We just had Deanne jump in here and Chrissy. Hey, Deanne and Chrissy. Thanks hey. for joining us. All right, I'm all set now to mix it up, I think, Drew. Unless you guys have any other questions or... 
just let them know we might have some new viewers coming in every once in a while. Just oh, let yeah. them know when we're here and maybe prizes. Sure. So we are, if you stick around to the end of the show tonight, we're going to draw for this book called The Pain Companion. So this author was on Drew's show, Exploring Mind and Body, on his radio show podcast as well. So if you get a chance, you can check out that interview, exploringmindandbody.com. And so we'll be taking uh, names at the end of the show. If you stick around to the end, we'll have a code word for you to, to win the book, the answer to win the book. Um, if you haven't, no, <laughs> you haven't subscribed to Cooking with Dorothy, then you can do that. Drew put the link in. That will make you eligible to win prizes. And also you can, will receive recipes before the show so you could actually bake along with us. And you'll actually get sent the show afterwards as well in case you want to re-listen or maybe you didn't get a chance to catch us live, you can catch us after that. So let's keep going, Drew. Let's mix it up. All right. So I'm going to put the wet ingredients in. Suzanne said I keep losing you guys. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the end. Oh. That's too bad, Suzanne. Yeah, thanks for being here with us. Hopefully you can stick around. If not, um, we'll be here next Tuesday, and we'll be here live Friday morning as well. So, All right. This is my favorite blend. Like the peanut butter, the applesauce, and the maple syrup. Oh, my gosh. It's so good, you guys. And this is just the base of the granola. Then you can add whatever nuts and seeds that you want. Probably about a cup, a mixture of a cup of different nuts and seeds will do. But that's one of the reasons why I really like this recipe is you get to decide which one you want. At um, In the fall, sometimes we like to add pumpkin instead of applesauce. Then you get kind of a pumpkin-y taste in there too. And pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, all kinds of different fall spices like cinnamon and allspice and Loads. It's very nice. Made a comment here. Go away. Louise said the raw nuts go rancid in the cupboard. If I have lots of nuts, I store them in the freezer. Mm. I do the same with flax seeds, almond yeah. flour, etc. Because they go rancid too. Yeah. Great idea. Awesome, Louise. If you guys have any other tips for us, let us know. We love to learn from you guys too. And is there something else? I just wanted to mention that this one, you really have to work it. <laughs> As you can see, I keep digging from the bottom and squishing it down. So I could have actually probably used a bigger bowl, but I am queen of using bowls that are too small. That's my thing. It's Dorothy's thing. She does it all the time. <laughs> so you just keep mixing it with the spatula. Make sure the oats all get covered in the peanut butter maple syrup. Goodness. Well, I know what I wanted to ask. We have just over 200 hearts. I think we should get to 500, team. 500, 500 hearts? Can you do it? We got 10 minutes. I also wanted to know if you guys could leave comments in the bottom. This is this show is about 30, maybe 40 minutes. We try to get out of here. And we're wondering if that is too short because there's lots of people that stick around right to the end, which is awesome. But we're wondering if that's too short for you guys, if you want a longer Cooking with Dorothy show. Oh. Let us know in the comments. And if you're, per and it's not an insult if you're like we like the twenty, the thirty minute show. We're just curious because we want to, we want to bring you what you want. All right, we're almost there. It's a good arm workout mixing the granola, you guys. So you just want to make sure that on the bottom there isn't any dry oats left when you're mixing it up. All right. I could have used a bigger bowl to mix it. <laughs> But this is what I'm working with, so <laughs> we'll stick with that there. And I think mine are all mixed up nice and good. I'm just going to give it... Oh! <laughs> it happened, Drew! You lost some. I lost some. I'm just going to give it one more, sir. Suzanne's still with us here. She said dried cranberries, cherries, mm. and almonds. Oh, cherries. That's a good one. We've Wait. had some cranberries, too, Drew. I could have thrown in. You got hearts flying in here. We usually um, top it with our own fruit, our own fresh fruit. I guess that's why sometimes I don't think to put in dried fruit, but that's an awesome idea. OG berries, uh, raisins, cranberries, mm, those would all be delicious. 
Good so, luck. Lindsay's tuned in here. Hey, Lindsay! Our hearts are coming in waves. In waves? <laughs> Did they get to 500? <laughs> We're at 340. Louise says, I like the length. However, if more time is necessary, I'm fine fine with lingering too. Oh, thanks, Louise. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Louise. Yeah, we'd love to hear your comments if you guys would like the show at this. At 30 minutes or if you want to go longer. <laughs> we were talking about that after last week's show, if we should go longer or not. And I said, well, we should ask our viewers. <laughs> That's not for us to decide. That's for you guys to decide. So let us know uh, what you'd like. We've got Lindsay Love to sing here. Hey, Lindsay. Did you already say hi to Lindsay? No. Well, I don't think so. Lindsay, did we double say hi to you? I think we double said hi. If we did, you deserve it. <laughs> okay, so preparing your pan, you'll just want to take some coconut oil, about a tablespoon of coconut oil, and spread that, rub that all over, grease the pan, make sure the sides are greased up too, and uh, that will help with the sticking factor, but I really haven't had any issues with this one sticking. And then, you're just going to make sure your oven's at 275, nice and low. Then you can spoon, how can you see the brush strokes if you like this? Then you can spoon your granola into the pan. Just wanted to mention Kayla here right before you finish there. Kayla said, you guys are so organized. Oh. I need to get my life organized and be able to get into more of a routine going. Uh, for all you guys do for everyone, you fit it all in. Aw, thank you, Kayla. Thanks, Kayla. We're not really that organized. We run around like crazy people to set this up. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we've been doing much better. We actually got this down to a science. So we've been doing it so many times that we're pretty good at it. Well, it's show six, so I think we're getting the hang of it now. And I'd like to just repeat that last week it was late and <laughs> I, was I did all the setup i was surfing it was very important <laughs> and i did a good job setting up you guys dorothy did a very good job chantelle said you guys are fun to hang out with oh thanks chantelle thanks chantelle we do love these shows it's kind of like we're just sitting here hanging out with a bunch of cool people <laughs> and this is our job so we love what we do so you could tell that when i scooped it out into the pan it was in one big clump so you just want to work with it a little bit and break it up and make sure it's spread out nicely in the pan because you don't want to cook it in one big clump. The goal is to have it all nice and like, is that too close to it? It's pretty close. Not all nice and like <laughs> separated. So just work with it a little bit and try and get the clumpies out. The <laughs> clumpies. Get the clumpies out. That's Dorothy's grade one reference. <laughs> So sometimes I use the side of my spatula to try to break up the clumpies. <laughs> and then you're set to put it in the oven. But in case you're just tuning in, in the beginning of the show, I said the key to cooking or baking the granola is to cook it on low and slow. So make sure your oven is even 250, 275 works nicely. And it's going to take about an hour to cook, but you're going to get this nice golden brown um, effect <laughs> or finish instead of it being too dark or, or too clumpy. So set your timer for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and give it a stir every 15 to 20 minutes of baking. And when you're stirring, you want to get up from the bottom and flip and get rid of the chunkies again every time that you stir so that it comes out nice and golden brown and nicely separated. <laughs> and that's it. You So about an hour to cook and check every 15, 20 minutes. Just set your timer and then give it a stir every 15, 20 minutes. And then you can take it out to, to cool. And when it cools, it'll get its crunchiness. Um, Suzanne says, Dorothy, just wash your hands and pat it down. <laughs> <laughs> And then we had Kayla here. She said, I think she's offering us. There it is. What's the trick to baking a double batch? Mine always seem to take forever to dry out, like almost two hours, or it stays too wet and I have to turn it up. Maybe that was because I had my nuts in first, question mark. Oh, I, I don't know the 
would be put your nuts are in first. You could try. Um, well, you should put your nuts in after because of the properties anyways. Yeah, that's right. So you should always put your nuts in after it's baked so it maintains its nutritional value. A double batch would be a lot. Like this is six cups. So a double batch would be 12 cups. You might want to try using two pans, Kayla, instead of putting it into all 12 cups into one pan. Because you want it to be like, you want it to be a nice thin layer. Like you don't want it to be up nice um, thick. You want it to be a nice thin layer on the bottom of your pan. So I suggest doing two, two pans if you're doing a double batch as opposed to putting it all in. Because when you stir it, you really want to be able to get into the bottom and flip it over. And so it's nice and golden brown. <laughs> Suzanne said, sorry, I thought you were making bars. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, Suzanne. Um, I was going to say something else to Kayla, but now I can't remember. Well, you can reference how I bake granola, and now you do. <laughs> so when I bake granola, it's usually a lot. and He puts it up high. I do a lot, and then I and then, then it takes forever, so I cook it fast, and then it burns. And then it burns. So you might need to just be patient, Kayla. Oh, I know what I would, <laughs> yeah, patience. Granola takes patience, it does, you guys. But uh, if you're home just hanging out, that's the best time to cook it when you have, can flip it or stir it every 15, 20 minutes. What I was going to tell you, Kayla, was, well, see, now it's gone again. Oh, here it is, because you were saying that it it's still, like, wet and chunky. One thing that I do is when it's all done, like after the hour of baking, I turn the, I give it one last stir, then I turn the oven off, and I leave it in the oven as the oven cools off, and that seems to mostly dry it out. He's trying to catch flies, huh? If you heard him, that was him trying to catch flies. Did you know Drew is like my ninja? <laughs> it's true, I'm a ninja. He He's my ninja fly catcher because <laughs> he like catches flies right off of the counter. I'm like, hey ninja, get over here and get this fly. <laughs> it's true. I don't think people would believe it unless they saw it. I catch flies. He does. And he goes like this. Like, goes to grab the fly. He doesn't know if he has it. He's like, <laughs> see if it's in his hand. No. So we have uh, Louise said, I do mine in a larger cookie sheet instead of a deep pan. Ooh, that's a good idea. You could try that, Kayla, a cookie sheet instead of a pan. And then you know that it's nice and thin. We had Mike, he just tuned in here. He said, looks great. Can't wait to try it after cooking. <laughs> of course. Thanks, Mike. And then we had um, Kayla. She said, that's probably what I have to do, Drew. Learn patience. <laughs> Granola yeah. is the patient recipe it has it takes time. Low and slow is the granola model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you though, Kayla. I don't have, I'm like, I just want to eat it. Drew is an excellent at cooking, like stir fries, and he, he's very creative. He, if you've had a chance to try his chickpea curry recipe, mm, very good. Baking, sorry, Drew. <laughs> not your thing. Definitely not my thing. <laughs> We have 1,300 hearts. Oh my gosh, you guys. That is so nice. Thank you for well, all of the love. That's our biggest number of hearts so far. That is our biggest number of hearts. So that's it for, for granola, guys. Um, a couple of different ways that you can eat granola. <laughs> you can just have it as cereal. So you can pour some almond milk on there oh, in a bowl. <laughs> so scoop out your granola in a bowl and pour some almond milk on top. Fresh fruit, bananas, berries is nice as on top of the granola. You can also, Drew was talking about it earlier in the show, about our yogurt parfait that tasted like dessert. <laughs> it does taste like dessert. So what we do for our yogurt parfait is we uh, put on the base, uh, on the bottom of the bowl as the base, yogurt. Now Drew and I stay away from dairy yogurt. Um, we use a nice almond yogurt. So if you have some dairy sensitivities or dairy bothers your digestion like it, it does for me, then you can look to a uh, plant-based yogurt, like almond yogurt. So we put that on the bottom. Then we put frozen berries on top of the yogurt. Mm. And then we put all kinds of nuts and seeds. We put hemp seeds and what else? Pumpkin seeds. Hemp. Oh, I already said hemp seeds. All this. So we just, chia seeds, we just load up with 
nuts and seeds. And then we put a little sprinkle, about a quarter of a cup, of the granola on top of that. And it is so darn good, you guys. So yummy. And so that's another way you can make yourself a nice yogurt bowl. You could eat it as cereal. You can also eat it as trail mix, but like a trail mix, not as trail mix. But you know how when we, we have trail mix as a snack, we just kind of have it in a little container and eat it with our hands. <laughs> you can do that with granola as well. You just have a little container of granola and eat it as, eat it as a snack that way. Jen said coconut yogurt is very good as well. Oh, yeah. It is, Jen. Thanks for reminding me of that one. That is a nice plant-based alternative to dairy yogurt is coconut yogurt. Mm, it is good. And then Kayla said, do you guys have a pretty minimal pantry? Do you keep it simple? Our pantry? Should I show them our... <laughs> Well, up here? Yeah. Can they see it? I, I'll try to zoom in. How about that? It's, it's not the cleanest, Kayla, but you can see it, um, our pantry here. We have... Um, open, it, our... open it up. So we have our baking stuff up here. Cheese and spices. How about the essential oil section there? Essential oils. <laughs> That's my, that's a, Dorothy's essential oils, and those are my teas on the right. That's my essential oils, my baking stuff. So we have Himalayan salt, cinnamon, coconut, all the essentials for baking. Some of my baking stuff is down here. <laughs> we have spices, and I try to separate the spices into, like, you know, like, very organized, hot spices, savory spices, <laughs> baking spices, but they kind of just got all in. We have our superfoods down here, so chia seeds, maca, cacao, dulse, goji berries, and then superfoods continued up here. This is not ours. <laughs> that was left here from, a, from, from someone else. Not ours. Not that there's anything wrong with having that in your pantry. <laughs> not ours. Um, dulse, we have too, and we have superfoods. Yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> that's good. I don't know if that's minimalist or not. <laughs> so we should do our draw here. Sure. Should I announce the winner from last week first and then you guys can have a chance to enter the secret code? Yep. What is the secret code for today's draw, Drew? Uh, how about homemade granola? Okay, so if you would like to be entered into our draw tonight for this book, which we'll announce on the next show, the winner of, then enter homemade granola into the comments below. Tell them, about, tell them the book, the title of the book. The title of the book is The Pain Companion by, I don't know, how do you say the author's last name? Shockley. Shockley. Oh, I don't know how it was hard for me, but it was. <laughs> by Sarah Shockley. She was a guest on Drew's show, Exploring Mind and Body. And it's Everyday Wisdom for Living and Moving Beyond Chronic Pain. All right, so we're drawing for that one tonight. So enter homemade granola into the comment section. And if you're subscribed to Cooking with Dorothy, we can enter you into the draw for that one. And you can still subscribe. If you're not if you're not subscribed, then we, I put the link up there so you can still subscribe. That's perfectly okay. Yeah, so if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> There's a bunch of different benefits to being subscribed. One is to being entered into the, our draws for prizes. The other one, you receive the recipe before the show so that you can get the ingredients and bake along with us. And then the other uh, the other good thing about being subscribed is that you get the show after. So if you have to miss a show, you can't tune in live, and it'll be emailed to you and you can follow along later. Or if I've said something really good <laughs> and you've forgotten, you can go back and re-listen to the show as well. All right. Yes. <laughs> this was from last week's draw. We have a couple of stevia products from Tom King, Guide on Keto. He was on Drew's show as well. And the winner is Hilda. So she's won these. There's two aga agave stevia blends. There's two different. The other one's blends. maple. One's maple and one is vanilla. Vanilla and maple. And this nice little measuring cup. Yeah, cool little glass. It there. is cool. I like it. So thanks to Tom King for that prize. And congrats, Mom. And congrats. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and then, oh, we, so we have, if you guys still want to put your name in, why don't you mention Suzanne and Chantel? Yes. So Suzanne and Chantel both were winners of gift cards recently on the show. And they so graciously asked for their gift card to be donated to somebody um, who would maybe not have the opportunity to eat out or go out for a meal. So thank you so much for your generosity and your gracious hearts for donating your prize to, to somebody else. So that's very nice of you guys. So if you haven't had a chance yet, comment homemade granola into the comments. And Drew is going to try to drag those over, are you? I have. Oh, yeah. So we have Louise, Chantel, Kayla, Hilda. I thought there was more. Did I miss some? So, all right, we're going to wrap things up here, guys. Just let me know one more time. All right, thanks. So I have Louise, Chantel, Kayla, Hilda. Kayla. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. Oh, Lindsay. Did I get Lindsay? I think so. Uh, Lindsay, Louise. Okay. That's, that's, let's wrap it up. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I hope you have fun making your own granola at home. You can catch us this Friday at 7.30 Mountain Time, a.m., 7.30 a.m. Mountain Time with our live Friday morning show. This is a fun, interactive show, more of a Q&A kind of show. We usually have a main topic, and then you guys tune in, ask us questions, and it's basically like we're hanging out with you guys. It's awesome. We love Friday morning shows. So much fun. So you can catch us there. You can catch us back here next Tuesday with Cooking with Dorothy. We're starting a brand new um, series. So this series has ended on our Complete Truth Protein Snacks. Next week, we're starting a new series on back to school kind of lunches. Um, well that, that's kind of the theme, right, Drew? We wanted to focus on, we know that back to school is coming. So we want to focus or we're going to focus on how to make healthy lunches. So we're going to have a variety of different things going on how to stay away from processed meats and how to make some nice healthy sandwiches how and how to make healthy treats that will keep you full longer throughout the day and give you energy. So that's what we have going on for another six week block uh, is healthy lunches. That's right. Thanks so much guys for tuning in. Thanks yeah, for all the hearts. We got over 1500. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in guys. And if I uh, hope, I hope we'll catch you Friday morning. Maybe if they want CTP, let us know as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you need CTP, we would happily set you up with some with some Complete Truth Protein. If you're local in the old area, we can deliver right to your door. Uh, you can order online and we ship. And then, what else, Drew? Oh, you can pick it up at the CLC Fitness Center if you're local in town as well. We're also at the market every Thursday. Yes, that's what I was missing. Old Farmer's Market, we're there every Thursday. 3.30 to 6.30 as well. So different options there. If you need some help, send us a message and we would gladly help pick, help you pick um, the, the CTP that's going to work best for you. Kayla says, yes, please. <laughs> we'll set you up, Kayla. Yes. Um, Louise said, great show. Thanks, Louise. And then Kayla said, I have to order some to Westlock. And then Kayla said, can I come for a visit? Of course. <laughs> We would love to see we you and Leo, Kayla. We would love so. to see you guys, Kayla. Anytime. Yep. All right. I think that's the end, you guys. So we will catch you either Friday morning, Tuesday online. We'll catch you around. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.